I just I went there with my, my student credit cards and I worked my way up and I made all this money in the stock market and it went to my head and I started raving in Manchester when it began and I fell in love with that scene and I misguidedly tried to transfer the rave scene over to Phoenix. It wasn't my brightest idea having people bring ecstasy in and, and break all these drug laws. Anyway, SWAT smashes my door down. Uh, over 100 people are arrested with me, dawn raids, multiple dawn raids. Some of the guys who arrested with me were some of my bouncers, including a particularly big fellow from England called Wildman, who's one of the main characters in the book, who the gangs respected because of his fighting skills. So he was in the jail with me looking out for me. And then later on, because when I got separated from all, all my co-defendants, because my blog was getting in the news all over the world, people all over the world started sending in books and letters, not just to me, but to all the prisoners like Xena that I was writing about. So it became this unique situation where it was like a, the blog was a bridge to the outside world for all these prisoners. And I did bump heads with the Aryan Brotherhood over a number of things. And all these characters I was writing about at my blog in prison, all these tough guys and stuff. Xena's boyfriend was one of the toughest guys on the island. He recently smashed an Aryan brother and his face was wired together. He was getting his food into the straw. All these guys um, stood up for me. So I was very lucky. I did get attacked. Um, a few times, but I never got any bones broken out, or bones broken out, teeth knocked out, or anything. Yeah. So, if anyone's got any more questions, for us, do you want to hear the story about when you get attacked? <laughs> 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 All right, my parents, uh, my parents have flown over to come and visit me for Christmas, and I've got a new cellmate. He's a serial home invader, torturer. He's, he's preferred to break into your house. His preferred method of torture is to take a hammer into your kneecaps. His welcoming statement to me the night I move in with him is, I've got a padlock and a sock. I can smash your brains in while you're asleep. I can kill you whenever I want. Obviously, me and him weren't going to get along. He was a hardcore heroin addict. He'd be throwing up in the toilet one minute. I'd be trying to rest on my bunk. And he'd be coming stirring at me, telling me these torture stories. Look in my eyes when I talk to you. Look in my eyes. He was one of them. <laughs> what heroin drill running all down his face and throwing up. And um, what he did was he was very sneaky. He'd recently been in trouble for fighting and didn't want to risk getting detected by the cops because they've got cameras everywhere and losing any more privileges. So he paid his mate, he had his mate, a 20 stone California biker, att attack me knowing that my parents had come to visit me for Christmas and I'm walking to my very first visit with my parents. So I'm walking just as happy as can be because visits are golden. I've no idea this has been planned. A big goon comes up behind me and starts kidney punching me. And all the prisoners stop to see how I'm going to react. Because the gang rule is, if you don't hit back, you're a punk and everyone will prey on you. If you do hit back in the guard seat, you're arrested and sent to a prison within a prison called Lockdown or the Hole. And you lose all your privileges, including your visits. My parents just made all this money, so I had to think fast on my feet. Basically, he comes up behind me, spun around, kicked him. We started fighting, I smashed my back up real good, and then I got to the visit. Now, it all happened so fast that the guards didn't see it and I hit him back in the eyes of the prisoner so I didn't get in trouble with them. I go to visit and I can't tell my parents, they can see there's something wrong with me, I'm all shook up and my back was pretty injured for a few days. When I got back from the visit, the big guy's got a young person dangling from, dangling from a second story balcony by the neck and I did end up making friends with him actually. Never made friends with the serial home invader torturer who was my cellmate. I did manage to get moved out of his cell and he was throwing batteries at me for quite a while afterwards until I got a cellmate who was bigger than him and went up and had words with him and all stopped. Yeah. Yep.